for the first time, female Thor. Okay, the cost of a moat. Let's see. Got to protect the Bree Shed. Looks like we're going to have plenty of amazing Marvel news in the next year. Uh, a well-built moat costs $50 or more per square foot. Okay, this seems reasonable. Oh my god, this is going to be a cringe gold mine. I am so happy Marvel is going this direction. Because not only, look, hey, maybe the new Thor film will be good. Does the name sound like something you'd find on one of the hub websites? Love and Thunder? Probably. But you know what? It's canon. There's some history there. Now, nobody really bought that comic book, Lady Thor. Uh, but... That's neither here nor there. I'm sure it'll still make a billion dollars as Americans still have nothing better to do with their weekends than watch another soulless Marvel movie. But that's neither here nor there. What I like to focus on, see a lot of people don't understand how happy I really am because it's not necessarily that the movie is that bad. Rarely is a Marvel movie bad. There's three or four that I think were just not good. Most of them were in the beginning with the exception of one lately that I thought was pretty uh, poor. But for the most part, Marvel movies have the recipe down and they deliver what their fans crave. Three hours of escapism and I can't blame them for that. What I really, really look forward to is all the articles. Think about this. I don't know if this article is even written yet, but you know someone's going to have a problem with the title Lady Thor because it implies that Thor should only be a man and she is some sort of lesser version of Thor. But look at the articles we already have. Natalie Portman is your new Lady Thor opposite Chris Hemsworth in Marvel sequel. Okay, fine. Natalie Portman is your new Thor. <sighs> Is, he, is she the new Thor or is she the Lady Thor? And oh my god, cringe overload. Dude, she's not going to tickle your pickle. Marvel proved at Comic-Con that ending the Avengers was a great decision. You know, and this is featured on Time.com, the same one that used, um, you know, the situation in uh, Japan to push an agenda. Let's see what this article says. Rip Iron Man. Black Widow, Vision, Captain America's youth, and Thor's cocky confidence. The original Avengers lineup will dearly be missed, but it was time for them to go. That's right, everyone was sick of making a billion dollars. During the Marvel Studios presentation at San Diego Comic-Con on Saturday, studio head Kevin Feige announced that Phase 4 of the films, which will include MCU's first Asian superhero movie, the introduction of MCU's first deaf superhero and the reveal of the first openly queer superhero in the mcu oh this is gonna be a gold mine that radical change from 11 years of three straight white dudes iron man captain america and thor leading the avengers franchise and none of this could have happened if captain america and iron man were still around or if thor hadn't embraced his funnier side Feige began the panel by introducing the diverse cast of The Eternals, directed by Chloe Zhao. The lineup includes Angelina Jolie, who cares, Salma Hayek, who cares, Brian Tyree, none of these people are relevant anymore, all playing one family. Joining them will be actor Lauren Ridloff, who will play the first deaf character in the MCU. Way to get that target market. Uh, the, then he moved to Shang-Chi, Marvel's first Asian superhero movie, Canadian actor Simu Liu, Liu Lao, I don't know, uh, will play the master of the martial arts who faces off against the Mandarin. No, this won't be the same Mandarin as Iron Man 3, whom that film's director Shane Black described as a stereotype of Fu Manchu villain just waving his fist. Instead, the Mandarin will be the real deal, played by veteran actor Tony Leung. And Marvel is updating some older characters, too. Thank God, retcon everything. After Feige announced there would be a fourth Thor movie, Love and Thunder, Tessa Thompson took the stage to clarify that her character, Valkyrie, ruler of Asgard, is indeed queer. Oh, my. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. That's right. Her line was, what is your first order of business as king of Asgard? That's right. She said to find her queen. That's right. 
all those people who have been waiting for that moment to see a Marvel movie finally have it. As new king, she finds her new queen. That'll be her first order of business, Taysa Thompson said. In May, she had been nudging Marvel in that direction for some time, including fighting to keep the scene in Thor Ragnarok that show Valkyrie uh, in bed with a woman. The scene ultimately ended up on the cutting room floor. Then Natalie Portman revealed that her character, Thor's one-time love interest, Jane Foster, would wield the hammer uh, and become Thor. Portman reportedly left the Thor franchise after Patty Jenkins, who would have been Marvel's first female director, parted ways from the Dark World. Of course, went on to make history as the director of Wonder Woman. Now it seems a more empowered storyline for a character brought Portman back to the Marvel family. Oh, maybe it was a big Brinks truck full of money? I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that Natalie Portman has made significantly bad film choices in the past five or ten years. Uh, most of the films I... And by the way, I love Natalie Portman. Um, she has the right look. She in the right role is excellent, but most of her most recent films were suboptimal. Uh, Scarlett Johansson also attended Comic-Con to promote the upcoming Black Widow movie. After nine years of playing a sidekick, Natasha will finally get her own solo film. I'm sure everyone's awfully quiet about that after her comments about, you know, being an actor last week. Uh, the character and the MCU have come a long way since Black Widow's introduction in 2010 uh, when Pepper catches Tony ogling Natasha and dubs her a very expes expensive suit in the following years. The character Black Widow continued to be portrayed as an object as each movie suggested that she had a flirtation with Hawkeye. I, I didn't feel that at all. God, they're just pulling things out of thin air. Then Captain America, then Hulk, before she was finally allowed to be on her own. Think of all the videos we're going to be able to make over the next three years, everybody. When I read a sentence like this, I just, you know, I, my initial reaction is to laugh. But now I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and I'm extremely happy to have read it. Finally, Feige announced that Oscar winner... Uh, I'm not even going to try it. Uh, will reboot Blade, uh, once made immortal by Wesley Snipes. When Black Panther premiered in 2018, many fans cited Blade as the movie that laid the groundwork for a black superhero movie to break box office records. You know what? Here's the weird thing. I don't know how, how it is for all of you out there. But when I saw Blade, I was like, dude, this, this movie looks awesome. He's totally slaying vampires. At no point did I say, whoa. A black dude. Awesome. Anyway. Uh, the Rock offering correctives, giving Black Widow her own movie, evolving Thompson and Portman. Evolving Tessa Thompson, by the way, by making her gay. That's evolving the character, everybody. Um, in the leads with a set of supporting roles. Oh, no, never mind. I misunderstood that. Evolving Thompson and Portman characters into leads instead of supporting roles and retconning the Mannering character. Would it be possible for Jane Foster to take over as Thor if Chris Hemsworth hadn't already put a stamp on the character in six different movies? Probably not. No, definitely not. Would Black Widow be permitted to come into her own in a world where every man flirted with her and outright harassed her? Doubtful. Good lord, I never saw that. Imagine straining so hard for something to be offended by in movies. Would Shang-Chi evolve into a character player in the MCU if he hadn't debuted in the cluttered fray of superheroes taking on Thanos in the end of Endgame? It surely would have been less impactful. Well, not for people that read the comic book, not for fans of that character. It surely will take time for fans to grow to love these new characters as much as they adored Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. They never will. They never will. Now, does that mean... These movies shouldn't be made? Of course not. Go ahead. Make your Lady Thor movie. If you were so sure, let's be clear. If you were so sure that the world wanted a Lady Thor, why is Chris Hemsworth even in the movie? Okay, you know exactly why. People want Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Any other Thor will just be some budget knockoff Netflix adaptation, female or male. The same is true for Iron Man. Same is true for Hulk. You don't get 10 years of movies with the same actors playing the same roles. You don't get to just change them and expect everyone to instantly love them. Uh, the idea that 
you've gone completely woke, uh, highlighting only, uh, you know, basically promoting everybody uh, who isn't a white male in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a bold move. Uh, again, ultimately, for me, it'll come down to whether or not they're actually good films. Love and Thunder will probably be more like Ragnarok and be more funny and stuff like that. I don't see N Natalie Portman as uh, strong and, and powerful. I don't ever see that happening, I don't think. Uh, she also has kind of the stigma of who she is as a character. People see, you know, people won't see Jane Foster, they'll see Natalie Portman. Uh, and that's why you look at when people think of Iron Man, they think of Robert Downey Jr. So if you try to change who Natalie Portman is too much, it's not going to work. Um, you know, you have, and Tessa Thompson is likely the first LGBT hero in a Marvel movie. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Thor Ragnarok remains one of Marvel's best movies to date. Disagree. Uh, which is all the more reason to get excited about the most recent announcement that director... Uh, Taikaya Watiti, oh, I'm sorry, returning to the helm of the next Thor movie. Uh, I don't think, oh yeah, so it is going to be cheese ball. I mean, Thor Ragnarok was okay. Not every Marvel movie has to be super serious, but there's at least five or six other Marvel movies that I think were significant. I mean, Doctor Strange was better than Thor Ragnarok, in my opinion. Um, waiting for the Thor in new, almost subversive direction. Uh, Watiti took Thor in almost subversive direct, not only making his installment much more fun than the other two came before, but putting Chris Hemsworth's comedic talents to good use, but also turning the movie into critique of colonialism. Yeah, everyone got that. And the upcoming movie, Thor, Love and Thunder, written in the distinctly 80s She-Ra-esque font, oh boy, promises to be just as surprising. First, there's Tessa Thompson, who will be returning as Valkyrie, evidently as the new ruler of Av Asgard. Evidently, that's fact from the last movie. Um, she's got to find her queen. I mean, why Why does this matter? Look, here's what ultimately happens, too. Um, they don't really touch on the stuff much in the movies. They just talk about it for press buzz. Like, if she has a, a, a girlfriend in the movie, it won't be like a full-on romance. It'll be like a throwaway scene that every like thirsty blue checkmark on Twitter or hack blog writer uh, will will fawn over. They're playing these people. Another major news, Natalie Portman returned to Thor, sometimes love interest Jane Foster, but instead of just coming back as a pining lover, Portman will pick up her own hammer as Lady Thor. Uh, this won't surprise anyone familiar with the comics where Foster wields Thor's weapon uh, after he's deemed unworthy. The hammer's been destroyed in the movies, but is often the case with fantasy and sci-fi. There's probably some way around that. Of course, there's always ways around it. And yeah, this does have some historical uh, significance. For me, I'm looking forward to all the woke hot takes. Uh, I probably, you know, if Chris Hemsworth is in it, I'm probably seeing it. Um, but... If it goes full on woke, well, I'll just wait to, uh, you know, rent it or something like that. To me, no Marvel movie anymore is must see TV. It just isn't. You know, Doctor Strange, am I excited to see the next one? Yeah. Well, I see it in the theater only if I'm extremely bored. I mean, I finally went and saw Spider Man Far From Home this last week. Actually, excellent film. I would get rate it probably a strong 9 out of 10. But. I would have waited for it to come out on DVD. It just was raining all day and we had nothing to do. And that, I think, is the vast majority of the Marvel audience these days. I don't know. I hope to. Uh, I hope that we get some, ultimately, some amazingly hot takes. Uh, I'm interested to hear what your comments are in the comment section down below. We'll talk to you again real soon.